Welcome back, guys. Episode number two. This is going to be how you can build a new table and add fields to that new table that you have created in FileMaker Pro. So when you have opened up FileMaker Pro, uh, if you just go to the left-hand side here, go to the Create tab, you can see all these different resources that we got. We got resources, blank, convert, and we have starter packages here. Now, for me, I'm just gonna go to blank. Most developers will start with a blank slate or uh, most developers will create a foundational database that will allow them to do the quick stuff like you're always gonna have customers, you're always gonna have invoices payment. So uh, as you grow, you create these foundations unless you're just developing for your, yourself and your small business to um, actually produce better workflows throughout your business. So with the blank uh, selected, I'm going to click create and it's going to ask you where you want to save it. We're going to save it locally here on my desktop. I'm going to call this Skillshare course. And you'll notice that this window pops up as soon as you create a new FileMaker Pro database. This, this window here is where you manage your database. A database is just a collection of data. And we've already said in the previous video that the collection of data happens like an Excel spreadsheet. You can consider Excel spreadsheet like a single table. One spreadsheet equals a table of data. So in our tables here, it auto automatically created a table named the same name that we just gave the database. I typically delete this. It says also remove occurrences of these tables in the graph, which this is telling me is I'm going to click cancel for now. What is a table occurrence? Well, over here in the relationships, this is the graph of how you interact with each table within the database. So this is considered a table slash table occurrence. Now what that dialog box is asking me is that if I have this field selected and I click delete, it says also remove occurrences of these tables in the graph. And yes, you want to do that. Every time you delete a table, you typically want to delete the table occurrences within the relationships graph. So I'm going to click delete there. And you can see now we have a blank slate to create new tables. Now, before we said a table is like an Excel spreadsheet that can hold data between the rows. And typically, like I said, you have like a customer's table, a customer's table. So you can type in, it says table name down here. We can say customers and click create. Now what FileMaker does, it creates these automatically default fields. Your primary key is its unique record identified key just like your house has its own key to unlock the door and every single house near you has a different key every single record that you create in your database considered like a customer that customer has its own unique identifying key think of it also like a social security number your social security number is bound to you and you only it's your unique identifier to who you are so in database development that's something that you typically need. You always will need something like that, which is called a primary key or an ID field. This is so. This is how we know that this customer is who he says he is, and it's gonna it's gonna go through the entire database system. So we have customer's ID. Then FileMaker creates these creation timestamps created by modification timestamp and modified by. Now what we can start doing is adding custom fields that we would personally want in our database. And some of those fields in a customer's database would be like the first name field. We're going to create first name. We're going to create last name. And then typically in database ML, you have those fields separated. What I do for a calculation result, we're going to do our first calculation right now to where we're going to bind first name and last name into one single field. We're going to call that C. I do a lowercase C. This tells me that this field is going to be a calculation underscore full name. And then after for full name, I do another underscore telling me the, the setup I have, the calculation. In this case, it's going to be the first name and then the last name. If you wanted to do the last name first and then the first name, you would say last name, first name. I'm going to do first, last here. Command L will change the type to calculation. The calculation type is telling FileMaker, hey, we want to create our own calculation result for the specific field. We're going to click create and we have this specified calculation box that comes up 
And on the left-hand pan here, we have the current table that we're currently in. It's gonna automatically select the table that you're already in creating fields within. And for us right now, this is perfect because we need this. So in the current table customers, we want to select the first name field. We're gonna click space and we're gonna use the and symbol. So we're saying the first name and in FileMaker, if you use double quotations, double quotations hold text. So FileMaker represents quotations as a text value. Our text value for now is just gonna be a space. So we have double quotations and then a space in between. So far, this is reading first name, space, and then we, got, we want our last name. You can also start typing in the text editor or the code editor and also use your arrow keys to select which field that you want, in this case, last name. So this reads first name and space and last name. So now we have the calculation result to display a first name calculation. Click OK. Typically, a context customer will also have like a phone number. So we just have phone number. Command T will select the type text here. I typically do text because uh, you can do formatting later on for like parentheses. If you do a number, uh, a number field type, you won't be able to have parentheses or the dashes. So typically, it's a text field create that and then we're going to have an email field and email is also text type. We can actually jump in here so you can actually learn that the creation timestamp is an auto uh, it's an automatically entered number and this number is actually the creation timestamp so it's, it's doing the timestamp at the creation of that record it's going to give you the date and time at which what at which that record was created. The validation. So the, the cool thing with FileMaker is you can actually create validations per field instead of programming all this stuff. It's already hard coded there. So you can say like, I don't want this field to be empty. Restrict data type to a four year digit display. You can uh, you can do it in range validation. Validate the cal by a calculation. Display a custom message if the validation fails. Storage. We'll get into that. Auto enter. So those are pretty much the same other than like created by you do the creation and then you have all of these different creation types. You have date, time, timestamp name, and account name. Account name is based off of the account, the user that is currently logged in. Back to the relationships graph, you can see that it automatically creates every time you create a new table, a new relationship will appear. Back in the tables section, we can actually start creating another table. And another table that we can create here is probably something like we can do multiple billing addresses, or we can do, let's say, um, files. So let's say we have customers and we want to track how many files this customer has. So we're going to create a new table called files. And typically a file would have like a container. So you would have like an image file, or we can just call this file as well. We can do command R. If you do command R, it changes the type to container, which we're gonna create that. We already have the creation timestamp, created by modification timestamp, modified by. Let's say we have a file name, that will be a text. And we have like a file description. So we have file, file name, file description, cool. Now one thing to know, we just talked about how we're gonna have files by the customer, meaning that we're gonna have files related to the customer. So in this table here, we need a way of tracking where these file, who these files are related to. And before we said that we can relate data based off of someone's unique identifier key, which is that primary key. In the files database, we need to track what that key is. So what we're going to do here is we're going to type out our customer underscore IDFK, IDFK. And what this telling FileMaker or the developer per se is that an IDFK is a ID foreign key, meaning that it's the foreign key of something else. It's coming from, it's the child record 
coming from a parent record. We'll talk about that in the relationship graph here. So we have the parent. This is the parent table. So this parent will have some files. And this file is related to the foreign parent. So basically what we want is this primary key to automatically be entered into this customer ID field so that every time a record is created in the files on that customer's layout, the customer's ID will be automatically added to that file's record. We're gonna double click into this edit relationship tab. And here it's showing you the details of what this line is doing, this, this connection. We're in customers, we're relating the primary key is equal to the customer ID of K. This bottom section here, we have both tables. We have customers and we have files. We want, the, we want to allow the creation of records in this tail via this relationship, meaning that we want to create records in the files table via the customer's layout. And we also may want to delete records via this relationship as well. We're gonna click OK. So, so far in this video, we've gone over creating a, two tables, creating fields within each of those tables, and then also jumping in and doing a simple relationship. We can click create, and it's gonna actually commit those changes. And then in the next video, we're gonna go over how to customly design layouts, structure the database to have um, different folders for different layouts, such as layout views, list views, and then table views. And we can go in and edit all these layouts to make a sophisticated app to our benefit. See you guys in the next video.